always, if you haven't paused the video yet and tried the question on your own, please do so before moving on. Before moving forward, it's going to be convenient to label the given charges in the diagram, and we can do that using some uppercase letters. We can call this charge capital A, this one B, and the third charge C. We will next recall that there is an equation that gives us the potential produced by point charges. Notice all of these charges are point charges. And we can see that the potential produced by a point charge is equal to the Coulomb constant multiplied by the charge of the particle divided by a distance. Now, this question is asking us to calculate the electric potential at the upper right corner of the rectangle. So when we measure the distances, we have to measure to this point right here. And because there are three point charges, we're going to need to make three calculations of electric potentials. So let's set those up. We've used subscripts for each of the three point charges. Notice that the distance for charge A would be the distance from the charge to the upper right corner of the rectangle, which was given as six centimeters. We have to note that when we plug distance into this formula, the distance has to be in meters. So we're gonna end up plugging in six times 10 to the minus two, and that will safely convert the distance into meters. Also note that the charges are given in microcoulombs. So for example, for charge A, when we plug it into the formula, we have to do eight times 10 to the minus six because that's gonna convert it into coulombs. The distance for charge C is relatively straightforward just as it was for charge A. It's simply that distance here, which we can see from the diagram is three centimeters or three times 10 to the minus two meters. Where it gets a little bit challenging is the distance from charge B to the upper right corner of the rectangle. But in fact, we can find that distance by using the Pythagorean theorem. Note that this side is opposite to the six centimeter side, so it too will be six centimeters. And then this side right here is opposite to the three centimeter side, so it too will be three centimeters. So we can come over on the side and just find the RB value by using Pythagorean theorem. So here we have the hypotenuse squared equaling a squared plus b squared. And when you solve for RB, you get the square root of 45, which actually simplifies to three radical five centimeters. You don't have to actually put it in simplest radical form. You might wanna leave it as approximately 6.71 centimeters. And again, we need to just change that into meters. So that's gonna be 6.71 times 10 to the minus two meters. So we have all the known values. Remember, the microcoulombs has to be converted to coulombs and the centimeters have to all be in meters. We can plug into the three expressions for the electric potential. Let's also finally recall that Ke, the Coulomb constant, is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. So we'll go ahead and plug in all the known values. Once we have all the known values plugged in, we can pick up our calculators and crunch these all down. And here we have the values. Notice the unit is in volts. And to get the total electric potential at the upper right corner of the rectangle, all we need to do is just add these values together. We should take note that electric potentials are thankfully not vectors. So we don't have to break them up into X and Y components. We simply algebraically add them together. And when we do that, we should get approximately 2.67 times 10 to the positive six volts as the total electric potential at the upper right point of the rectangle. For part B, we're gonna repeat the procedure, except this time we are replacing the two microcoulomb charge, which was what we called charge B, with a charge of negative two microcoulombs. So really easy here. All we have to do is stick a negative sign in front of that charge. And when we go over to the calculation, we're just gonna replace this positive two times 10 to the minus six with negative two times 10 to the minus six. We'll notice that the equation for electric potential does not have an absolute value around the charge. Sometimes in the equations of this chapter or previous chapters, you'll see an absolute value symbol. That is not present here. So we actually do wanna keep the negative sign when we perform this calculation. Now, all that we'll do, of course, is add a negative sign to this result. And then when we add them together, we get a positive 2.13 times 10 to the sixth volt. So a slightly different value when we replace that positive charge with the negative charge. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional physics videos as well as videos from other subjects. You're always welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed below, and I would happily provide a video showing the solution to that question.